Hello everyone, today I uh, just thought we chat about uh, semen analysis. Um, semen analysis is really the only test that we have to investigate male uh, subfertility. Uh, we know um, subfertility as a cause is about uh, one third of the subfertility cases are a result of problems in the male. So since this is the only test we have for males, we should know as much as we can um, about about it. As usual, we start with uh, definitions. So, aspermia is a complete lack of um, semen at the point of ejaculation. Um, azospermia, on the other hand, is a lack of spermatozoa in the semen. Oligospermia is a um, reduced number or low number of um, spermatozoa in the semen. Asthenozospermia is um, poor motility of spermatozoa. Hyperspermia is um, like a large volume of semen. That's around, uh, people say anything around or above 5.5 mils would be called hyperspermia. Teratozospermia is having a large proportion of um, abnormal uh, sperms in the in the semen. So that's that's what uh, these terms mean. So before we talk about how a normal uh, semen analysis looks like. We need to talk about how a semen sample is collected because this is uh, information that we normally would give to a patient, um, that male patient uh, with their partner when they come uh, to the clinic and we write that request for uh, semen analysis. And we need to remember that uh, semen analysis is really a test that is not invasive per se. So it's better to have a semen analysis even before we get to doing an HSG and those invasive tests that we do uh, in females. It's important that we have at least a semen analysis. So we need to explain to the patient that a semen analysis is best uh, collected um, by masturbation. So that's the best way known to collect um, uh, semen. Um, it should be collected after three to seven days of abstinence and before collection, hands should be washed, uh, penis should be washed and uh, during the um, phase in which we are trying to get the semen, we should make sure that we don't use any lubricants at all. Um, these lubricants include uh, saliva. They should not be used. A condom should not be used because it has all that gel that is put there. It also has, uh, some condoms have um, spermicide or um, jellies in them. So it's advised that um, condoms are not used for collection of, um, of semen. The bottle that should be used should be wide on the top uh, because um, this would uh, reduce the chance of um, spillages, especially during uh, the ejaculation point. Then um, if anything spills at that point, it's important to remember that um, the water spilled should not be put uh, back in the bottle. What's important to do is um, inform the lab that some of the semen spilled so that they take into account when they look at the volume of the of the semen. The semen should be transferred from the point of um, collection to the lab at body temperature. Extremes of temperatures are very um, damaging to spermatozoa and therefore they should be transported at kind of a body temperature and then they should get to that uh, place to the lab within an hour of collection so if it's possible it's ideal that semen is collected uh, within um, the lab uh, premises if there's a place in the lab where the uh, the semen can be collected yeah it's it's important to understand that um, you need at least two uh, tests to say 
um, this result is abnormal or normal. This is because um, a semen analysis is um, the poor, sen the sensitivity is very poor, the specificity is very poor, and it's not really a reliable test. So sensitivity means that the, the ability of the test uh, to pick up those who cannot fertilize the femur is very poor. The ability of the test uh, to pick up those who manage to fertilize the female is also very poor. That's the specificity. And reliability means that um, even in the same individual, when you do a test uh, today, uh, do a test um, a month later, you might have um, very different uh, results. So that is why it's important to have at least two to three tests uh, to declare somebody normal or abnormal. Um, on the word normally, we would only do a repeat test when we have an abnormal result. Normally, people are not doing repeat tests when they have a normal, a normal result. Yeah, so let's look at the parameters that, um, that are in the semen analysis, the important ones. So first is volume. So the volume of the semen should be around uh, 1.5 mils. Um, if the volume is too high, um, above 5.5 mils, we already discussed that that would be hyperspemia. If the concentration is less than normal, um, that is um, oligozoospemia. Uh, so the normal concentration should be at least be 15 million um, spermatozoa per mil. The total quantity of sperms in the semen should be about 40 million. Um, about 40% of the semen uh, should be mobile and uh, if we have less than this number being mobile would say there's asthenozospemia. Um, vitality which is the proportion of uh, sperms that are alive should be around 60% and at least 4% of the spermatozoa should be morphologically normal. Uh, this has been adjusted uh, by WHO from the previous one, which was around 30%. Now, they say you need at least 4% um, of the spermatozoa being normal as compared to what it used to be, which was about 30%. Uh, the pH of the semen should be just alkaline, 7.1, 7.2. Uh, it should have uh, less than 1 million per mil. Um, leukocytes. Um, one point to note is that if you find an abnormal test and you have to repeat the test, it's better to wait for three months before the repeat test is done. This is because um, sperm production takes about 90 days. So if you look at um, a semen analysis within a month, uh, within a week, within two weeks, you are really looking at the same sample all over again. So it's important to wait for three months so that you look at a different, completely different sample in that period because you have had uh, new, completely new sperms being produced in that uh, period of waiting of uh, three months. So when we look at a semen analysis, it's important to understand, especially uh, when we look at the numbers, it's important to understand what is it telling us and what is it uh, not telling us. So one of the things that the semen analysis is not telling us is the whether that uh, sperm is functional or not. We know that um, uh, sperm function is a very complicated uh, process. We know a sperm undergoes uh, several changes in the female genital tract, what is called the capacitation, before it can have uh, the mobility to uh, find the, the ovum. We know that uh, after it is capacitated, it has to move and attach to the receptors on the ovum, the ZP3 receptors. Um, that can also be defective. We know that uh, there is an acrosome reaction that goes on the spermatozoa to be able to release enzymes that penetrate uh, the corona radiata and then penetrate the, um, the ovum. So 
it's important to understand that what you are measuring is not whether the uh, spermatozoa can can do all these things. Uh, many times when patients come on the ward, we look at the um, semen analysis, we just look at the numbers and we uh, classify them as normal. So then we even tell the, um, uh, the patient that all oh, your semen analysis is uh, normal, so you are okay. Uh, it's your partner that has a problem. So we need to be very careful how we um, transmit the message and how we interpret uh, these messages to patients. So a normal uh, semen analysis does not mean that uh, that uh, man can fertilize a female. It just means um, two things. The two things that uh, normal semen analysis means is that the man is producing um, spermatozoa. And they are not only producing spermatozoa, they are able to have an erection. That's the second thing it's uh, telling us. And the third thing it's telling us is that they are able to transport the spermatozoa effectively from the production area to the outside world through the penis. So that's what a semen analysis is telling us. It's not telling us that uh, this... Um, sperms are functional or not functional at all. So it's important to be careful about that. So the last thing is that um, when you do this semen analysis, uh, you need to really pick the correct uh, lab because um, this is a technically difficult test. So if you use a wrong lab that does not follow uh, correct standards, uh, you end up having uh, wrong results all the time. So really that's the last point that we need to remember about semen analysis. Uh, thank you so much for listening and we'll see you in the next uh, presentation.